here. I think we just have that knot. May I have your attention? As we are about to begin, please have a seat and settle down. We would like to remind you to please mute your microphone and you could turn on your camera during the whole session, but please in polite position. Thank you. The Honorable Dean of Faculty of Agriculture, Professor Dr. Insinyur Samanhudi, SPMSI IPM ASEAN Eng, Head of Department of Food Science and Technology, Dr. Danar Prasetyanga, Distinguished Speaker, Prof. Dr. Sutawat bin Jagul, and as we beloved as all participants, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Please be upon you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It has been an honor for me. My name is Graciela Amaris, and on behalf of Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agriculture, I would like to welcome each and every one of you to the fourth International Guest Lecture Week 2021. Before we move to the next agenda, I would like to inform you that this is a series of the event in the third consecutive days. Today, we will have a lecture from Professor Sutawat bin Jakul with a topic of utilization of marine byproducts in food industries. Before we begin the event, we would like you to invite all of you to listen Indonesia National Anthem Indonesia Raya. Please join us with silence. Let me first of thank you everyone. Let me first of all introduce you the, to the agenda today. We will start with an opening remark from Professor Saman Hudi as the Dean of Faculty of Agriculture Universitas Blas Maret Surakarta. A lecture by our invited guest, Professor Sutawat bin Jagul from Prince of Songla University, Thailand, and a discussion moderated by Dr. Nurul Huda. And lastly, closing. Ladies and gentlemen, Without any further ado, we are now going to listen to the opening remark delivered by Professor Saman Hudi as the Dean of Faculty of Agriculture Universitas Blas Maret Surakarta. To Professor Saman Hudi, time is yours. Thank 
Oke. Okay. Thank you. The Honorable Professor Dr. Sotawat Penjagul from Prince of Songla University Thailand. Colleges from Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas 11 Maret. Our beloved student and other participant of the Forge International Guest Lecture Week. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to all of uh, you. Personally and on behalf of the faculty, part of the Faculty of Agriculture, I would like to welcome uh, you to the Forge International Guest Lecture Week. This activity is organized by the Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agriculture, and supported by the World Class University Program by Universitas 11 Smart. This activity will take place from 28th to 30 September 2021. I am so glad that this activity, we are able to invite three world-class scientists from different countries, such as the one Professor Dr. Sotawat Spinjakul from Prime of Songla University, Thailand, who, who will deliver the first lecture today. Number two, Professor Dr. Rajiv Bhat from Estonian University of Life Science, Estonia, and number three, Associate Professor Dr. Yaya Rukayadi from University Putra, uh, Malaysia. Who have remaining knowledge and experience in their uh, field. So, thanks you to all the invite, uh, invited lecturers for sparing their valuable time in this uh, Forge International Guest Lecture Week. To all students, I am sure that this activity will be a good chance for you to broaden uh, your horizon and get insights about recent issues in food technology and related area. This is highly important because you need to understand about the global trends in the world. Looking at the current situation, we have learned from the COVID-19 that food sector is able to survive despite uh, the disastrous in situation of pandemic. This should be considered as a great opportunity for students in food science and technology uh, department to contribute uh, to the society. Therefore, I am confident the guest lecturers in, in the upcoming three days will make the student even more certain that they have come to the right study program in Universitas Plus Smart. Finally, I wish that after this activity, the communication between the Faculty of Agriculture and all the speakers can be continued and uh, thus we can initiate more collaboration in the future, including research and academic activity. To fulfill the request from the organizer, I would like to officially open the Watch International Guest Selector Weeks by seeking the blessing of God. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Well, to save the time, once again, I would like to give uh, a very warm welcome to each and every one of you, and please enjoy the lecture. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Samanudi, for the great and motivated speech. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Continuing to the next agenda is guest lecture by Professor Sutawat Benjakul. The lecture will be moderated by Dr. Nurul Huda. Dr. Nurul Huda is a lecturer at the Department of Food Science and Technology, Universitas 11 Maret. He received his doctoral degree in food science from University Kebangsaan Malaysia. Her teaching and research activities are mainly related to the field of farm processing and preservation, 
fish, meat, and animal-based products, functional food and nutrition, now and health. Dr. Nurul Huda has published many research articles and has publication as Index Scopus in 22. So, without any further ado, please welcome Dr. Nurul Huda. Okay, thank you, Mr. Master of Sir, Master of Sir Romani, uh, Honorable uh, Prof. Saman Rudi, Dean of Faculty of Agriculture, University uh, 11 Marat, Honorable Dr. Danar uh, Prasetya Tiangga, uh, Forum Chairperson of uh, Science and Technology, Faculty of Agriculture, and all of the uh, respective lecturers of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agriculture, University uh, 11 Marat. And also uh, for the uh, all the students uh, who uh, attend uh, in this uh, lecture week. And also, of course, to this, our distinguished uh, uh, speaker, Professor Dr. Sotot Binjakul uh, from Pensokla University. Uh, so let me uh, introduce a little bit about our uh, distinguished speaker. Uh, currently, Professor Sotot Binjakul is a director of the Internal Center uh, of Ceylon in Seafood Science and Innovation uh, of Songkla University. Uh, Prof. So Dr. Sotot Binjakul graduated from uh, uh, undergraduate uh, program from French Supply in Thailand in 1989 and master also in food technology program uh, uh, in 1991 and PhD uh, from Oregon State University US in 1997. So uh, from, uh, the, uh, the field of interest of the postdoc is more on seafood chemistry and biochemistry, and also especially utilization of the fish processing byproduct. He is the right person to talk about the marine byproduct, as I know. So so far, uh, professor Dr. Starwood already published uh, more than 876 uh, publications in Escorpus, and with the highest index is very very high, 89. Uh, maybe uh, I need to live for time to to reach your 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 score. Your has in that post uh, tower, and and uh, with the number of citation is uh, around uh, twenty nine thousand uh, nine hundred something like that. Yeah. So, Professor Tawad also uh, edited a lot of many prestigious journals uh, such as the Journal of Food Chemistry, Journal of Post Development, Journal of Food Science, Journal of the Fisheries and Environment, and also editor a uh, review for many, many prestigious journals. You can name the journal and then the Prof. Tawad, the name of the Prof. Tawad is there, uh, Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry, Food Research International, Journal of Composite Analysis, and many more. I think more than 60 uh, journals uh, already uh, received the service from Prof. Tawad as a reviewer. Prof. Dr. Sertat Bunjakul as a recipient uh, for many awards. So just uh, listed for uh, 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 a sample of the award, uh, uh, such uh, as a Thailand Young Scientist uh, Award in 2001, uh, Prime of Research Year 2002, and uh, Outstanding Research in Thailand Research Fund Year 2011, uh, Thomson Rutte Highly Cited uh, Researcher in the Year 2011. Uh, 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 15 and I saw uh, from to all uh, I think from to all uh, uh, 15 till uh, last year uh, Bob Stoward is a recipient for the clarity analysis high cited researchers uh, for the consequency uh, six years. Uh, Bob Stoward also the recipient the person of the year in the, uh, 2020, uh, 2021, uh, as uh, because of this uh, extraordinary work inside and internally from the uh, Thailand uh, government. Professor Stott also recipient for many innovation awards. I think uh, his uh, uh, city is more than 50 pages, so maybe I need to read a uh, whole day only to read your city for the award. So I think without delay, so let me uh, learn directly from the aspect about this list uh, uh, of the market by product in food industry. So Prof. Tawad, the line is with you, Prof. Tawad. Okay, so thank you so much, Dr. Nuru. And I'm going to start my lecture. Yeah, yeah. So, can you can you see my slide? Can yes, you see it. my slide. 
Yes, okay. yes. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank Personal Roof and also University of UNS you know, for inviting me to uh, give the lecture. So basically, I would say that this is most of the uh, presentation today is based on our uh, work in our center. So my title today is Conversion of Fish and, uh, and Shellfish Processing Byproduct to Value-Added Products. Okay. So uh, before starting, I would like to introduce my university a bit. Uh, my UC name is the Prince of Song Klai University. Okay. So it's the first established in 1967 as the first university in the southern part of Thailand. And they have, uh, we, uh, it consists of five campuses and they is comprised of 39 faculties, colleges, and institutes. And there is one major hospital, a dental hospital, and also a veterinary hospital. And PSU is named as one of nine national research universities of Thailand. Okay, and this is a map for the uh, PSU. As I mentioned that they have the five campus scattered in the peninsula of Thailand. And we have a long course in the Gulf of Thailand here, and also in the ocean. And I'm from here, I'm from the main campus, Hadia campus. This is a, a, a main campus in Hat Yai. Uh, Dr. Nuru visited previously. Uh, this is a hospital in the campus. Also, we have convention center. And this on-campus on dormitory in the campus. And this is a lake uh, in the campus. So we can jog around here in the, in the uh, evening. All right, so I'm gonna start uh, my lecture. Um, Actually, you know, like a fishery product, uh, it has become very important in income generator for Thailand for many decades. And we take a look at the pie chart here. When we combine between the shrimp and also canned tuna, is a uh, uh, constitute around forty percent of the total export. So that's very important uh, commodities for uh, Thailand to export these kind of fishery products, right? And during the processing, um, there are a number of byproducts are generated. Those kind of like uh, including uh, you know the head or shell, some for example, a shrimp shell, crab shell. So uh, and also those kind of product, for example, tuna or the fish, you can see a lot of the uh, uh, leftover, like including skin, head, viscera, or trimming or backbone or even roll for the female, they can generate it. But however, uh, those kind of like uh, sorry, those kind of the, of the number. Amount of uh, amount of the byproducts is the depend on the process use and also the, the species. And basically, the those kind of uh, leftover uh, have been used as a feed or uh, the fertilizer with a low market value. And nowadays, you can see those uh, uh, those byproducts are converted to be marketable with the nutritional uh, uh, property or supplement like. Uh, you can see atanxanthin, fish collagen, chitosan, uh, for example, bone meal. Okay, so first of, uh, of this, we, I would like to uh, uh, go one by one. So I kind of start from fish collagen and gelatin. Okay, what is collagen? So collagen uh, is a protein, have the molecular weight around 300,000 Daltons. It's a triple helix in structure and from the, uh, alpha, uh, they consist three alpha chain we are each other like this, okay? And for each chain, they consist of the glycine every third position, except the 14 uh, amino acid from C N terminal and 10 amino, uh, amino acid from C terminal. They don't have this kind of structure, but for the rest, they have the glycine every third position. And at position X, Y, they uh, consist of proline or hydrosphorine. So overall, the collagen uh, have the glycine around one third of total amino acid. So if you read the paper and they have the glycine, um, you know, like a 50% is not unreliable, okay? This is based on a theory. And also they have amino acid. Amino is its correct term, not amino. So it consists of proline and hexaproline is around 23, uh, 23 or more than that. It depends on species, okay? And uh, where is, uh, we can produce a uh, collagen and gelatin form? Actually, we can produce both collagen and gelatin from skin, scale, bone, or even swim bladder like this. Okay. And how to produce the, uh, the uh, uh, collagen? Actually, we start from the removal of the non collagenous protein using uh, my alkaline solution and followed by the fatting. However, if we use the scale or bone, we have to demineralize it. Basically, we use the hydrochloric acid, okay? And then later, we just are subject to extraction using acid. Basically, we use the acetic acid. 
However, when we use acetic acid, the yield is quite low. So that's why we use the pepsin as the aid uh, for the process. I can explain later how pepsin works and help to just increase the yield of the collagen. And then we precipitated the uh, collagen and dialysis and freeze dry it. All operation must conduct it at low temperature. Why? That's because to avoid the denaturation of native collagen, triple helix in, in nature. All right? So that now I'm gonna explain you why the pepsin have been used to increase the yield of the collagen and without a change in the uh, nature or characteristic of the collagen. So I remember this triple helix, we call topo collagen. And topo collagen gonna link together, anchor together here. And you see at the fibril, and you can see in the chicken or, or fish itself as a fibril here. And when we apply pepsin, pepsin gonna clip specifically at the telopeptide region here, you can see here. And once this guy an anchors the uh, 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 region was cleaved, this kind of topocollagen can leach out easily into the acid like this. And that's why we come up with the higher yield. So it's uh, no doubt this is kind of like, you know, the, the information um, they done in our lab and, and other, other lab was as well, mostly in our lab. You can see from the chart skin, the uh, AC and PSC. AC stands for acid soluble collagen. Why? PSC stands for pepsin soluble collagen. You can see all the times the pepsin, uh, pepsin, PSC have the high yield than PSC. This one also cloud feather back skin. It's a freshwater fish. This sea bass skin and swim bladder. And also the last spotted golden fish also is a marine fish. They have also uh, have the high yield for PSC when compared with ASC. Okay. All right. We will take a look from the uh, protein pattern. You can see from here, we, uh, this is uh, the collagen from the skin of sea bass and swim bladders. And you can see from the uh, pattern in general, we can see that alpha chain uh, band intensity is kind of like almost uh, two times higher than alpha two. So basically, this we can classify a type one collagen. So type one collagen consists two alpha one chain and one alpha two chain. And also they consist of beta chain. Beta chain is dimer and gamma chain is trimer. So this kind of alpha chain linked together by covalent bond is stable. However, when compare, you know, with the same sample under non-reasing and reasoning condition, you can see here, for example, the skin uh, under non-reasing and reasoning, you can see the same pattern was observed. What it mean by this is mean that no disulfide bond stabilized the uh, triple helix. So the, the pattern is the same, all right? So this is kind of like an increment of uh, uh, several literature that collagen contain no cysteine. Right. When we take a look from P, uh, PS, uh, solubility, uh, we can see that uh, both ASC and PSC, they have the high solubility in the acidic condition. However, they lost the solubility in, at the pH around five up to the uh, alkali pH. So they cannot soluble in um, any uh, uh, at the neutral or apply pH. All right, so now this is the uh, like native collagen we obtain uh, by extraction process I mentioned. How we use it, okay? So some one company in Thailand, they also use native collagen as supplement in the uh, pomegranate here. So why they use pomegranate? Why didn't they use the tea or uh, the milk? That's because I mentioned previously that the collagen is soluble in acidic condition. So that they're smart enough, they select this, this uh, pomegranate because acidic in condition. And also, you know, they claim that the polyphenols, you see? So now there is kind of healthy drink and beauty drink at the same time, okay? And this is uh, why they, 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 they select that one, okay? And uh, other application, collagen can be used, you know, as a, um, a medical uses, like a tissue engineering, drug delivery system, and also scaffold. You can see from here. This is scaffold for tissue engineering. So uh, actually the scaffold is kind of like allow the cell to proliferate or grow. You see from here, uh, here you can see some cell, the PD cell. You know, PD cell is kind of like a, uh, the, uh, the cell of the membrane cover the bone. And you can see that the aerosol here is a cell. Now we also have the cooperation with the uh, professor from the faculty of dentistry they take the, our uh, fish collagen and they're gonna uh, make uh, uh, the scaffold 
for the the cell from the gum tissue. You know, the the kind of the pro the, the patient will have the problem with the gum. Okay. But now we move to the uh, gelatin. Gelatin have similar uh, the process but different. Okay. At the beginning, we have similar process. We just soak the skin in the, my uh, alkaline solution to remove non collagenous protein. Okay, and then we wash it, soak it the acidic solution. So what happened is we end up with a swollen skin, Sw uh, skin kind of swollen, okay, lose the structure. And that's why they allow those kind of hot water to penetrate into the skin easily because it's now the looser structure. And please take a look from here. Basically from literature, normally they use 45 to 50 degrees Celsius, but in fact, it's not a way through for all the species. I'm gonna explain later why not recommend for all species. And then later uh, for maybe after 12, 12 hours or 18 hours, it depends. So we filter and then clarification and dry and come up with the powder, all right? And this is a cartoon that to make you understand more that how to uh, extract uh, gelatin. This is starting from the, you see, you remember the uh, collagen fibril, the topo collagen linked together as the matter collagen. And then we have to acid pretreatment. After pretreatment, what happens is, you know, the pH is lower than pi, so that induces the like a positive charge, and then they can repel each other and become the swollen material. And this kind of favor the um, penetration of hot water, over hot water, to get into here and break down hydrogen bonding. And you can see that the tupoyelic is kind of like a disrupted and become amorphous in structure, we call gelatin. What we have to consider to production of the gelatin? First, thermal stability of matter collagens. So di different species, for example, temperate fish and top tropical fish, they have the different thermal stability. So we have to consider as well. The, the second factor is indigenous proteases. It's located in skin, okay? So mostly the heat activated proteases. And is have negative role in gelatin production. So I'm gonna talk later. All right, this one is a gelatin from the uh, sea bass skin. You can, this is sea bass, I think Bersonuru tribe previously how many visited uh, Hard Yai last time. And uh, some of them, they, they, they produce the fillet. I just, uh, and then the skin is become the byproducts, okay? And this is uh, indicating we, we vary the temperature for extraction from 40, 45 degrees Celsius to 75. You can see from the protein pattern, with the higher temperature, you can see the lower band of uh, alpha chain, or so beta chain here. That is mean that the thermal uh, process can induce degradation by, uh, uh, by uh, thermal degradation of the alpha chain or also beta chain. And, and this will lead to the decrease in the gel strength as you know that the, for, for the gelation, the chain link is very important to form the, uh, the strong network, okay? So with the higher temperature, uh, the, uh, the alpha chain have the shorter chain that because the degradation, so that's why they cannot form the good gel. So it's indicating that by, by decreasing in the gel strength as the temperature of the extraction in, increase. Okay, move to the other uh, species that interesting. Unicorn-related you know, you know, skin. I think maybe in, in Malaysia and Indonesia, you have this species. And this species, you can see the, the white uh, meat and uh, like a thick uh, meat. So that mostly the, the fillet and also the, uh, uh, the, the export at the fillet. Okay, and they can make the fish steak, right? And what happens is when you also do similar thing, you can see different thing. We vary from 45 to 75. However, at temperature of 45 and 55 that commonly used for other fish, you can see that the gel strength is lower than when we use the 55, 75 degrees Celsius. And also when, when we compare with the, with the, without the soybean trypsin bitters here, right? especially for the 45, you can see that when we add the soybean trypsin bitters, the higher gel strength was observed. So what happens here? Why the 65 and uh, 75 uh, and better temperature for extraction of gelatin from this species? So we hypothesize that the skin contains the indigenous proteases. And what happened when we heat at the 45 or 40, uh, 55 degrees Celsius, 
those guys actually uh, proteases and the cleave this guy like among uh, the dissociated alpha chain. And you can see the chat chain peptide here. And as you know that the chat chain peptide uh, uh, cannot uh, form the good gel because they have the low junction zone. All right. And to confirm that they have the, the, the they have the some proteases present in the skin, we use the serochide the protease inhibitors and including uh, like PNSF and also sorbine inhibitors that are aerosized here. This is control one, uh, this is a skin. You can see the skin contain the alpha chain, a beta chain. I will when extract and incubate at the 50 degrees Celsius, this kind of band is kind of become lower. That become a de de degradation. I will in the percent of the serine protease I mentioned, PNSF or soybean tips inhibitors. Uh, those kind of beta chain, alpha chain must more retain. So it's indicating clearly that the serine protease is a major protease located in the skin. However, for the other inhibitors like uh, pepstatin A, number F, you can see that they cannot help to protect the degradation. This is specific for aspartic protease like pepsin, for example. So from the result indicating clearly that the protease is also located in skin and we have to be careful. Right, and then apart from the fish skin, the uh, squid skin also can be used to see. But one thing that you can see that's dark color that because the chromatophore is just kind of like a sac that would contain the pigment here, and you can see the dark skin like here. All right, so that's why we we end up with this uh, like a dark color like this. Okay, so that's why we we use the bleaching agent. We use hydrogen peroxide at different level. And you can see from here, we start from zero, 1%, 2%, um, 4%, 6%, 8% here, okay? And you can see from here that 1%, 2% are lighter in color, okay? And when we uh, uh, take a look from the protein band, you can see that somehow you can see the lower band intensity when we use a higher level of hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is oxidizing agent, strong oxidizing agent they can cause the fragmentation of the chain. That's why when we measure the gel strength, I think we lost here for a while, Dr. Tower, Dr. Danner. Okay, I need, uh, we need to wait for a while. Maybe uh, Pop Stawat uh, got a problem with his uh, line. So uh, just for, uh, be patient for, for a while.
So, mohon bersabar ya, di uh, WhatsApp Ops Tawat. I think uh, uh, dia sudah baca yang di read my uh, WhatsApp. Maybe, you no, know, he try to connect with us again. And also maybe for the student, I think it's a good opportunity to all of you to learn something uh, from the presentation uh, of Pops Tawad. Yeah. Jadi kita bisa belajar dari uh, Pops Tawad uh, presentation dia yeah. yang disampaikan yang tadi itu bagaimana Pops Tawad menggunakan bahan-bahan uh, sisa, ya, yeah. bahan-bahan apa ni, bahan-bahan yang terbuang untuk jadikan produk-produk yang lebih berharga, ya, yeah. uh, seperti tadi kolagen, kemudian uh, gelatin, ya, yeah. dan tadi mungkin uh, poster ada mention tu as dah menerangkan uh, ternyata kalau kita menggunakan ikan tropical itu kita bisa menggunakan tempat yang lebih tinggi 65 dan 75 darjah Celsius ya karena biasanya for the gelatin extraction itu menggunakan tempat yang rendah 45 dan 55 nah, tapi kalau ikan tropical ternyata bisa menggunakan tempat yang lebih tinggi dan memberikan hasil yang lebih baik ya seperti yang tadi disampaikan uh, Prof. Tawad ya karena uh, mole, apa ni uh, molekul kolagen dan molekul uh, kolagen itu menjadi lebih mengembang dia dia solen solen itu jadi kembang dan kalau dikembang itu nanti dia penetrasi di panas itu akan lebih baik ya sehingga uh, proses uh, konversi dari pedang kolagen ke gelatin itu, itu, itu akan lebih uh, sempurna dia sehingga gelatin dia hasil pun akan lebih baik. Jadi uh, tadi juga uh, uh, Prof. Adi menerangkan uh, uh, kepada kita uh, basic information uh, dengan uh, kolagen apa itu kolagen sebetulnya yang merupakan gabungan daripada glycine, polin dan hydrofolin uh, ya. Jadi tiga amino sini yang berulang-ulang uh, susunannya dan memberikan struktur yang uh, unik ya uh, kepada uh, bagian uh, kulit. Jadi uh, tadi uh, kita sudah uh, belajar uh, daripada Pop Sutawat bagaimana uh, ini uh, lab dia cuba uh, menggunakan uh, sisa uh, kulit ya terutama tadi kulit tadi dan kulit ikan ya dan juga tadi juga menggunakan cuma-cuma uh, atau sotong ya uh, untuk memproduksi uh, um, bahan-bahan yang lebih uh, bernilai apa. Uh, Ting dia 
game-nya. Last presentation tadi, Kosa juga mention pada kita bagaimana cara menghilangkan peluang dan achievement uh, daripada uh, uh, Zoom ni ya. Dengan memilih kalau Zoom itu kalau kita kalau kita progress dan memilih dia, sebabnya dia akan hitam ya. Bukan ada achievement dia sudah dengan menggunakan Zoom itu. So don't worry about the language. Longit only medium of the uh, communication. Yeah, bahasa itu hanya medium saja. The most important thing yang paling penting adalah pertanyaannya. I will try to translate your your apa ni your question to Postawat. Yeah? Uh, kalau ada yang ingin tanyakan, just uh, please uh, use this opportunity uh, untuk belajar. Okay, I need to okay, I need to apa ni? Uh, Uh, balas uh, WhatsApp postawat. Ya, yeah, saya so, yeah, balas dulu WhatsApp ya. Yeah. So kita tunggu ya, let's see. kita tunggu sekejap karena password ni the way to uh, reconnect with us. Okay, password, welcome again. Oh, so really sorry, you know. We... Oh. It's okay, yeah. it's okay, it's okay, you wait for you. Okay, okay, okay. okay password. Yes. No, the last slide about the, um, what? No, no, yeah, the previous one, it's about the squid, squid, squid and squid. Oh, this one? This, this one? Uh, no. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yes, this one. Okay, okay, about this one? This one also? No? Ah, yeah, okay, okay. The last, yes, yes. It's, okay. This one, you... Sorry, oh, I talk a lot. <laughs> no, that you lose. Okay, okay, I, I can I can start from here. No? Don't talk about Don't talk about Okay, all right. So now get back again. So sorry. Uh, actually, you can see that with, with a higher level of the hydrogen peroxide, uh, the gel strength is decreasing. That's because the hydrogen peroxide is a strong oxidizing agent and it can cause a fragmentation and degradation. And for the delta E uh, color differences, we can see that the 2% at the lowest uh, delta E is mean. So that we recommend that to use the 2% for breaching of the skin before extraction of gelatin. All right. And the problem with drawback of fish gelatin, normally they have the poor gel gelatin form forming ability when compared with the bovine or porcine. And also they have a strong fishy order. That's because uh, they're caused by lipid oxidation products. You see, we take a look from the fish skin, they, uh, they have the phospholipid also type AC visceral. All right. And then what we found that, you know, we can use spray, spray dry to remove the lipid oxidation product. Okay. That's that because they have the uh, low molecular weight, volatile compound. And you can take from here, from the table here, you can see that we, when we use spray dry last column, when compared with the freeze dry one, FD and FD, you can see that with you using the spray drying, we can remove most of the aldehyde you can see here when compared with the first column, non-detected. And also for alcohol, and also we cannot detect a ketone here, all right? So that's why we can remove the fishy order from the, the gelatin. 
And as I mentioned previously, that the ge forming ability of the gelatin from the uh, fish or the cuttlefish is not good as a mobile porcine gelatin. So we can use cross-linker. And this one, we try to use the natural extract uh, containing a high amount of a phenol compound. We use kiam wood and also cashew bark, cashew nut bark. And we, first of all, we have to, this is the, like a kiam wood and a cashew nut tree. I think you have the in Indonesia, also Malaysia. And before extraction, we have made the dry and grinding powder form and extraction using the ethanol and stir for uh, 12 hours, remove solvent and uh, dry overnight uh, at, the, uh, uh, for, uh, at 70 degrees Celsius. And what happens is we have to like uh, oxidize the phenol, phenol compound to be oxidized form to be quinone. Uh, and we study the effect of the pH 7, 8, 9, uh, and oxygenated the solution using bubbling with oxygen, pure oxygen for 30 minutes to ensure that the oxidation of the phenol compound occur. And we neutralize it before using. We neutralize it before using. And in this case, we use the gelatin from cuttlefish skin and extract uh, for 18 hours at 15 degrees Celsius. And to prepare the gelatin gel, we start from gelatin solution. Normally we use six Point six seven percent which normally all the literature, they use this kind of concentration. And we heat it up for 40 degrees Celsius, uh, add the 1% of, uh, extract, oxygen extract, stir for one hour, and set at uh, 10 degrees Celsius for 16 to 18 hours, come up with gelatin gel. And you can see from here that when we prepare the uh, extract with different uh, pH, you can see that pH 9 with alkali uh, condition, they they provide a gel with a higher gel, gel strength when compared with the PS7 and PS8. A similar result will, will file for both extract, I mean, uh, here would extract and also the cashew nut bark extract. And when we increasing the level of the extract, we can see that the gel strength also increased uh, gradually with increasing level of the extract. And the result was the similar for the both extract. And we can take a look from the just uh, microstructure. This is a for bovine a gelatin, and this is a control for the uh, uh, cuttlefish skin gelatin. Whenever we add the extract C and D, C is uh, for um, the um, hemwood extract, and this for the cushion extract. You can see the big difference be between the strand. The, the strand become larger and that kind more strength, uh, more stronger, you know, that would lead to the uh, higher in gel strength when we added the oxidized phenol compound or oxidized extract from the uh, wood or the bark. What happens is here, when we have the phenol compound, when we oxidizing, uh, actually in a, under a alkali condition in the present oxygen, they convert to be quinone. The quinone is an electrophilic, and then they more likely to uh, take the electron from a protein, is the protein sent for. So now they link with protein and the further link to other protein molecule and become cross-linking. But this cross-linking is uh, formed by covalent bond, which is strong bond, all right? But if we don't convert the uh, phenol compound to be quinone, it uh, still have the heresy group and they can form or link the protein by hydrogen bonding here. But hydrogen bonding is a weaker bond than covalent bonding. So it determines the gel strength of the gelatin, all right? Okay. So basically the gelatin have been used you know, for food ingredients. They use a stabilizer in ice cream, yogurt, and also make a jelly product or even gummy bear. Okay. And also what we have studied in uh, our uh, center, also we uh, study on active packaging, bioedible packaging, active uh, edible packaging. This is a sample that uh, basically when we want to use the, like make the pouch or, or, or the bag, we have to, study on sealability. And luckily we also can seal it at the pouch like this, we contain the oil here and seasoning here. And after 15 minutes using adding boiling water, you can see that those kind of pouch totally dissolve. And you see, you can see here, is a make the, 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 uh, the, the water become the, the red color that because the chili in the seasoning, okay? And the one advantage is, is mean that we cannot, we don't need to find the trash bin to throw the bag, plastic bag, like, uh, you know, when you go to buy the instant noodle, they have two pouches, you see? And then when you, you, you uh, uh, 
tear it and you have to just uh, find the trash bin. But this one, no, we don't need that. And apart from packaging, we can use as a putting material, but basically gelatin may be used together with cattle sand all the time as a composite coating. Cattle sand uh, has been an antimicrobial agent, I'm gonna talk later. And they use a coating for gold pomfret fillet, basic white shrimp, beef steak, and they found that they can extend the shell life of the refrigerated, uh, uh, these kind of uh, products, right? Now I'm done for the collagen and gelatin, but however, uh, the, nowadays, the hydrolyte collagen and peptide are very popular. That's because they have the bioactivities, all right? So how to produce hydrolyte collagens and what is bioactivities I'm gonna uh, talk from now on. So pretreatment of raw material is similar to the gelatin, you know, and then you, you have to select the hydrolysis process and then end up with the hydrolyte collagens, okay? But one important thing that we have to focus is mean that when we use fish skin, you have to ensure that you have to remove the fat as much as, as, much as possible. That because they become the fishy odor and it's undesirable, okay? So hydrolyte collagen. So remember the typical helix of the topo collagens and when we denature it by heat or anything, they can dis and dissociate it. And then we have to use enzyme to cleave the peptide to become ch chain peptide. So normally they have the molecule with around 0.3 to 8 kilodaltons. And hydrolyte collagen is highly digestible and easy to absorb to human, uh, in human body. And this is a sample that we have done. You know, uh, we start from uh, the skin. This is sea bass skin. And we have reactive as well. And we end up with the hydrolyzed collagens here. Okay. And uh, the factor affecting bioactivities, because the bioactivity is very important for peptide. So the factor important for uh, affecting the bioactivity is mean the pro uh, process used, what kind of process you use, type of enzyme you use, what the concentration of enzyme you use, and those factors determine the peptide, right? and also the sequences of amino acid in the peptide. And of course, they govern the bioactivities, okay? And this example that inside processes, they affect the bioactivities of, of the hydrolyte collagen. You can see here, we use sea bass uh, skin and we use the uh, five processes. The first one is we use alkali, alkali but at 2.2 uh, unit uh, per gram for 1.5 hours. And this we use alkali 0.2 unit for 1.5 hours. This we, we use parpen. 0.3 unit uh, for one and a half hours. And this is two enzyme. We start from palpine first by using uh, 0.3 unit for 1.5 and followed by alkalase to 0.2 unit for 1.5. And this one similar thing, but we use a different unit, okay? And this is two enzyme used together, step by two step process. And you can take a look from all the uh, hydrolysis we used, we found that the one that used the uh, Papain 0.3 unit for 1.5 or 1.5 hours, followed by alkylate 0.3 unit for 1.5 hours. They have the highest ABTH radical scavenging activities. They also have high DPH radical scavenging activities. The FRAP also highest among all the processes, but however lower than ascorbic acid. Metal chelating is quite high when compared with others, uh, hydrolysis one. And you can see from here for ABTS and DPS radical scavenging activity, our, our hydroxide have the much higher than ascorbic acid here. You can see compare here. And when we uh, uh, see the um, side distribution using multi top mass spectrometry, we found that the major, major peptide have number with around 880 uh, Dalton and 1,100 1, Daltons. And for amino acid composition, we also found the glycine around one third. That is mean that they are uh, more likely from collagens. And also they detect the high amino acid hydroxychloroquine at 185 residue uh, per 1000 residue. And they also have the high hydrophobic amino acid. This is important because they, uh, it's have been known that hydrophobic amino acid play a major role as an anti anti-oxidative activities, okay? And when we uh, sequence, uh, do the synthesize the peptide uh, from the uh, uh, hydro uh, from our hydroxyl, you can see from here that every third position 
they have the glycine, as I mentioned previously. So you can see every peptide, but however, they have different sequences, they have different molecular weight, and of course, they have different activity. So we, we, we detect for the, we determine for ABTS radical scavenging activities. We found that the first peptide, they have the highest uh, activities. Okay. And also this one, we produce a uh, hydrolyzed collagen uh, using the unicorn later jacket skin, you know, that the, they remember that the one they have the indigenous proteases. We use glycyl endopeptides, glycyl endopeptides again from papaya latte. So no doubt that they prefer to hydrolyze glycine. And that's why you see that the C-terminal from the peptide we found, they have glycine. And again, every glycine at third position. Okay, so this is kind of like, a, okay, to confirm that from the collagens. And now we move to bioactivity of hydrolyzed collagen. Because now a day, you can see, I'm not sure in Indonesia, but Thailand, uh, a lot of beauty drink. I mean, the drink fortified by hydrolyzed collagens and think, uh, or uh, suggest to take it at, for the joint and bone benefit. Okay, so one thing that prevention of DNA damage, these are data that we, we done, you see, and we found that hydrolyzed collagen from unicorn like the, the skin, they can prevent the DNA damages induced by oxidized uh, and oxidant. We use hydrogen peroxide as an oxidizing agent. You can see from here, we use as two level 40 and 60. For, you take a look from the first bar. You can see the control without any oxidant. There are little damages of DNA, but when we add the hyperoxide 40, the damages is around, almost reach 20%. And for 60, reach 45 or uh, 55%. However, in the presence of hydrolyzed uh, collagen, you can see that DNA damage has decreased as a dose dependent manner here. You can see mm -hmm. this one also. So uh, they can prevent the DNA damage in the cell. The one thing that the uh, why hydrolyzed collagen is popular, that because it related with skin nourishment. It means that when you take the collagen, you have the very beautiful skin, nice skin, you know, like a, and also the younger, all right? You see, that's why related with aging. And you see when we get, uh, the people get older, we have wrinkles. I think most of people doesn't, doesn't like this wrinkle, right? It's for lady because they want to be young forever, you know, pretty forever. And how the hydrolyzed collagen can help? Uh -huh. So that, um, this is a, like a, a theory that they have to all action of hydrolyzed collagen. The first one is they serve as free amino acid. It's a building block for formation of collagen and elastin fiber. And also collagen oligopeptide act as a ligand binding with the receptor on fibroblast cell. Remember fibroblast cell is a, like a, a cell with the skin. Uh, and they can produce a new production of new collagen or elastin. And this is not my uh, uh, work, but okay, I think it's interesting. So they use the uh, uh, four week old male white star rat, they fed with the uh, diet, they use the casein 12%. And this one, they fed with the hydrolyzed collagen person as well. And the youth control is kind of standard uh, diet. And after four weeks, they sacrifice the, 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 rat, the rat. And then they do the immunoblotting. And you can see from here that uh, they, they immunoblotting uh, toward the Taiwan collagen. You Taiwan that uh, you remember, F2, alpha one chain and one, one alpha chain. Taiwan collagen, you can see that one for the one, the fed that with the hydrolyzed collagen, they have the uh, uh, larger band. Also Thai 4, they have the larger band. What happened, why we have to focus on Taiwan Thai 4? You know, like a skin, our skin like this, on the epidermis, they have the, a lot of Taiwan, but for the basement, they have the Thai 4 collagen. Whenever the uh, uh, Thai 4 or Taiwan degraded, it means that they cause the wrinkle or, you know, like uh, uh, in the skin. And one also in the important factor is mean metalloproteases. So you can see for uh, actually standing, the sample fed with the high red collagen, they have the lower metalloproteases. It means that can inhibit the metalloproteases. And again, metalloproteases can uh, cleave the uh, type four collagen investment. Once the investment is weaker, it's become wrinkled like this. 
So this is a major role for the hyaluronic collagen. It's mean the first one in good expression of collagen of the type one and type four, and also inhibit metric metalloproteases. Okay, and this is our we also confirm uh, by our our study. We also use the uh, hyaluronic collagen for CBAS together with the different ratio of the ascorbic acid or vitamin C, and we found that if we use the two to one ratio, and we found that the they can induce proliferation of fibroblast cell as the dose dependent manner. And also when we uh, uh, take a look, a close look for the collagen production in cell, we found that when we use hyaluronic collagen together with vitamin C at 221, they have the highest production of collagen in cell, fibroblast cell in the dose dependent manner. So it's known now that normally in the, uh, in the market, they have hyaluronic collagen plus vitamin C. And this, our data also support this, and also apart from the skin nourishment to uh, proliferate the fibroblast cell, they also they help in wound healing. So now from, from this one, we ask fibroblast cell to represent the, the, the skin. And we uh, see that the, the cell in the um, micro uh, sick well plate. And, and then we scratch it using sterile tip. You can see here as a scratch here is a representative wound. After 24 hours, we add the hydrate collagen at this different level. You see here, uh, 125 up to uh, 400 uh, microgram per milliliters. And you see that after 24 hours, the one that treated with the uh, 20 and 550 microgram per milliliters, the wound is kind of more, uh, the gap is kind of lower. And you can see wound gap is a decrease. Why the control is still the same? The same. You see here, it's still the same. And that indicating that the uh, hyaluronic collagen can, can help in the wound healing, all right? So we move to osteogenesis. It's mainly for uh, bone strengthening. We use pro uh, osteoblast cell. Before study, we have to check that uh, which level that no uh, cause no toxicity to the cell. And we found that since uh, start from 50 to 80 microgram per uh, milliliters, they have no toxicity to the cell. And this one indicating clearly that when we uh, use the hydrate collagens, you know, like uh, uh, HB100 to 200, they can induce the um, numerization of we call calcium differentiation. And you can see that this guy dot, you know, we call calcium noodles. Uh, noodle, noodles here, this mean that the calcium. And when we uh, monitor, uh, you see, but by, uh, um, Spectrophotometer, we also found a similar trend. And so I can conclude that the function of uh, fish collagen is mean that they can exhibit uh, radical scavenging activities. They protect oxygen induced by DNA damage, and also they deal with the skin care, anti aging, moisturizing effect. And, okay, so that's why normally in Thailand, I'm not sure in, in Indonesia, Malaysia, they also have the beauty drink, they can see beauty drink, and also they fortify with the hydrolyzed collagen. That because they help the skin, okay? And some, uh, most of the women also, they, they prefer to drink this one to have the nicer skin. And also we, they su suggest, you know, to just like, a, now they, you can see, they, they, they sell it like a bottle and you just like to take the teaspoon or two spoon and put a drink and uh, take it every day. That because they, apart from skin, they also help in joy or bone, as well for elderly, you know. All right, so that one about the hyaluronic collagen, collagen gelatin you know, from skin, also even from the scale or bone. Now I'm gonna move to fish collagen, uh, fish, uh, fish uh, calcium. So actually the fish bone is discard from the fish fillet uh, processing, okay? They contain two parts, it's organic and the mineral phases. And we can produce a, a fish, uh, calcium from scale as well. And uh, the major composition of the fish bone is hydroxyapatite. What is hydroxyapatite? So they also consist of the uh, calcium and phosphorus. This is structure, um, a structure uh, of the hydroxyapatite. And they have the calcium to phosphorus ratio of one to six, seven. Okay. And they consist of the mineral around six to seven percent. The rest is protein, it's mean collagen. It's similar to our bone that, you know, we, the our bone, they have the hyaluronic together with collagens, 
you know, like uh, the pole, you know, the cement pole, they have the iron, uh, you know, in, inside as a collagen and cement as the hydroxypatite, okay? And this hydroxypatite uh, has a bio compatibility with the human tissue, you no know, toxic and no inflammatory activities. And how to produce hydroxypatite using calcination process. So uh, firstly, we have the fish bone, we have to boil it, why? To remove the meat retained in the bone and wash it using the water jet, dry it and calcine. I mean, use furnace at uh, 60 to 100 meters for two, two hours and melt it and make it harder. Okay, we call calcine bone. Okay, and the calcine has a type we can, uh, we, from the literature, they produce from different kinds of fish and sardine, you know, cod fish, Japanese sea bream. Okay, and however, for us, we don't consider uh, calcine bone as the, um, what do you call, for the um, nutraceutical, but we produce biocalcium. So what is biocalcium? So we start from fish bone, clean it, remove the adhering protein, defat and breaching, reduce the sizes, and we come up with biocalcium. You can take a look from here. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, that tuna, a canned tuna industry is very important. Maybe in Indonesia also, I think very important. Mm -hmm. And if you visit, you can see this Kai backbone is Kai discard or uh, leftover. And they have the uh, retaining meat and the, the smell is so, so bad, you know, and dark color. So we have to clean it, treat it, drying, grinding, and become the uh, biocalcium. And what is different between your biocalcium and calcium bone? Remember that calcium bone? We, in our study, we use 900 degrees Celsius for cigar. What happens is for calcium bone, they combust all organic matters. So you can see that they have, they find only ash, I mean mineral, right? But they cannot detect the a protein, they cannot detect fat at all, okay? But higher for biocalcium that we produce, we found ash around 72%, still have protein there because collagen is still, still there. And this indicate what? Hydrocyproline content is still there. Hydrocyproline, is a unique amino acid in collagen. Whenever you find hydrocyproline, it means that collagen is there, all right? And when we, uh, we they also found calcium and phosphorus as we expected, and the mill ratio is a 1.65 for biocalcium and 1.62 for calcium bone, okay? And this is also we do uh, X-ray diffraction to see, so to monitor crystallinity of the hydrocyproline. And we found that uh, calcium bone have the high uh, crystallinity. That because the high uh, temperature, this kind of like a force those kind of um, uh, the calcium appetite to pack tightly and become the more crystallinity. And this is how they look like between the biocalcium and the calcium bone. And more important, more importantly, you know, we use cacao two monolay, you know, to mimic the um, the intestine. And we found that the biocalcium have the higher bioavailability bio, 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 bio when compared with the commercial one, like a culture or calcium carbonate, because the bioavailability of the biocalcium is around 40%. However, for the, uh, for the commercial one I mentioned, it's for 20% only. So it means that even you take a lot, they cannot absorb into body, all right? So this is a kind of advantage of biocalcium. When I mean, calcium bone also have the lower bioavailability when compared to calcium. That's because we hypothesize that because of collagen still there. So that is can help to absorb into body. Uh, biocalcium have been used benefit because they can prevent the osteoporosis here. Uh, this occur when the, uh, for the elderly, as well for the female, okay? And this is a kind of, like, a, we can use a supplement, we can put in the capsule like this and breathe the plaque. And also, you know, uh, we can put uh, in the bottle like this, and we can fortify the lately in a snack, like a, a cookie or a, a bar, cereal bar like this, as a source of calcium. And this one we won the silver medals from the International Exhibition of Invention of Geneva, uh, 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 55, uh, 45th, uh, 45th. And also we get the special prize from Korean Invention Promotion Association at the same event. Okay, that also for the biocalcium for the bone or scale. 
Now I'm gonna to move to chitin catosan and oligomers. Actually, I think you're familiar with chitin catosan. You we can produce from shrimp uh, shell, crab, uh, uh, shrimp shell, crab shell, or squid pan. Uh, different between two sources is mean here. This uh, for shrimp or crab, they contain alpha chitin. The structure is different from the uh, chitin from squid pan. This is beta chitin. Alpha chitin is anti-parallel. However, beta chitin is parallel in structure here. This is alpha chitin, anti-parallel. For beta chitin, is uh, like for the squid pen in, in parallel. And actually, the beta chitin have looser structure. Okay. And chitin we can find in the different sources like crab, shrimp, squid pen, as I mentioned. So, but the content is very dependent on species. Chitin is uh, like a, a content of a uh, small unit we call glucosamine, uh, NSD glucosamine here at carbon number two. Okay. And if we remove this kind of acetyl group, we, call, we found glucosamine as the, uh, the products. Okay. I think you know this one. I'm going to skip, uh, go faster. So for chitin, chitin hydrogen, we start from the shrimp shell or crab shell. And we have to demineralize using mostly iron hydrochloric acid because hydrochloric can uh, uh, subilize those kind of calcium carbonate, you know, to be calcium chloride, which is water soluble and carbon dioxide. And then followed by deprotonized using uh, sodium hydroxide and become chitin. You can see from the carbon number two, they have the um, uh, acid group connect with the ammonia group here. And then if we want to produce hydrosan, you have to remove acetyl group, we call deacetylation process. Normally we use a strong alkali solution at high temperature. And you can see right now, they have free amino group at carbon number two. And this is a very important group that make the chitosan as the versatile or oral substance, okay? And they can use as the chitosan at four grand or the clarifying of the beer, okay? Because they can um, binding with the protein causing the turbidity in the beer. And also they use a water treatment there because they're, they're, uh, they're, they're large in size and they can uh, you know, buy with the protein and come up with a coagulant. And then you can see the water, waste water is clearer after treatment with the chitosan. And one more important in the term of the health, they can uh, use uh, as the um, uh, fat blocker, fat blocker, so they can prevent obesity. Okay, how they do that? Remember that the carbon number two, they have the free amino group. And when you intake, you know, in your body, into stomach, stomach have the pH around two or three, you see, it's acidic. And that's why it's make uh, this chart, a positive chart and repel each other. You can see now this catosan, and then they kind of like a mix up in the stomach and those chitosan surrounding oil doublet here like this, okay? And PKA of the amino group is around 6.5. So any PS lower than PKA, that MAC is a protonated. It mean that amino, amino group gonna be positive charge. Okay, so this is clearly, after you take chitosan here, chitosan go to stomach here, around here. And um, they can, uh, function at immense fire surrounding the oil doublet here. And when they go through those kind of intestine, which is uh, um, have the a neutral or KPS, they become the gel, become the gel here, the gel, okay? So gel light product. So what happens is when they make a gel, lipase cannot get in through and hydrolyze lipid. That's why it excrete out as a physics, okay? And this is what we have uh, uh, published also, we use the chitosan of squid pen and we mimic the um, gaso is in, in the intestinal tract and we follow those kind of like a uh, chitosan where it is in the system and we stain the chitosan using fluorescence as a uh, uh, green color here. You see, uh, surrounding our doublet, they have the chitosan all the times. So this kind of uh, chitosan, they can trap those kind of that oil doublet. And when it go through in this you know, track I mentioned, they become gel, okay? And they skid out, okay? 
apart from Kaito San, as a you know, like a fat blocker, uh, we can increase the value of the Kaito San by producing the oligomer. oligomer. So basically, because Kaito oligosaccharide or COS, okay, so they have degree of polymerization around on, um, uh, less than 20, and the molecular weight is uh, less than uh, 2,900 Daltons. That's because the cleavage of glycosic bond here. How to depolymerization? They have several kind of methods to produce the chito oil oil or COS. So we can use acid hydrolysis. We can use physical hydrolysis like aerodations, but the, uh, and also we use the enzymatic degradation. Basically, we have you use the chitosan S because the specific of chitosan, uh, correct? But however, like this. The chitosan S, they're very specific for, for the uh, galactic bond of chitosan. So we call chitosan S. However, chitosan S is still costly or expensive. So there's some, uh, most of the research, they also use non specific enzyme like amylase, protease, lipase. We also use, but I did not report today, we also use lipase. And surprisingly, you know, they can cleave those kind of chitosan. That because maybe they are chitolase. So in the presence of water, maybe they can induce the cleavage of uh, chitosan to some level, but not effective chitosan nest, okay? And you can see from literatures, they use the serochite like partial uh, use acid hydrolysis, okay? And they use the uh, enzyme cellulase, you can mention, and this is chitosan nest, and mostly they use it as an antimicrobial agent. Also, the, this one, they use chitosan nest, this one also use chitosan nest, this should on my list. But basically, the antimicrobial toward serochite of the uh, microorganism. I'm gonna skip here, okay? But one method that we have recently used in our lab is mean that we use uh, radicals to cleavage the uh, glycosic bond. You can see that we use hydrogen peroxide together with ascorbic acid. And for, so we mix it first and incubate it for 40 degrees Celsius and then generate free radical. And we add in, in the chitosan, uh, that this dissolve in acetic acid and heat it around 60 degrees Celsius to optimize the hydrolysis process. And we come up with the high collagen or COS and CTV and come up with supernatant content of COS. And this is from chitosan, this is COS. And we found that degree of polymerization around two to six is mean the number of no monomer per polymers. It means that two unit or six unit. I mean, uh, I mean, a small unit is glucosamine unit, and this is uh, what what uh, I explained that radical generated by the presence of ascorbic and hydrogen peroxide, they generate hydroxy radical. Hydroxy radical, hydroxy radical is a uh, has been a potential radical to just cleave the uh, any bonding like including the glycosic bond and also peptide bond. Okay, um, so this is a uh, one example that we have done. We use this process and we come up with a COS from the um, squid pen, and then we put in the SNC basalysis. And take a look from the yellow highlight only. You see that when we add that up to 0.2 percent, and we target on the challenge test, we incon inoculate the pseudomonas, you know, in, in the fillet. And we found that at the beginning, we add around 6.47 uh, CFU per gram, uh, per, uh, per, per, gram uh, per uh, email. And we found that, you know, with increasing level of the CS, the lower pseudomonas curve was found. And after 20, 24 hours, is also much more decreased. You see from five to four. It means that CS have the uh, time of activities. However, this one actually maybe next time, if I can keep lecture, I'm gonna talk more about co-plasma technology. So we use the COS uh, together with the co-plasma technology, and you can see that the 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 uh, um, the cost of the stimulus is much decreased when compared with the using COS alone. But this one uh, I cannot have time to talk today. Also, we add the COS, you know, in the three meter at one percent, and we uh, monitor up to ten days. You can see the control one that for total viable cow, cyclophilic bacterial cow, the cow is increased as a function of time. Like for example, TBC from three, three log cycle to five, uh, almost six log cycle. However, for the 
with the one at the COS, they start from the low one, and also after 10 days, they have only 3.75 log CFU per gram, which is different from control one. That all, and also peer, uh, psychopathic code also have the similar trend. And also the other, uh, the similar trend for other like enterobacterial C or pseudomonas one also. You can see the 10 day, the different, 10 day different lowers. Why did uh, the COS ha have the antimicrobial activities? That because they didn't do the, the leakage of the protein, uh, protein nutrients component and other intracellular constraint from the cell caused, caused by interaction between negatively charged of microbial cell and positively charged of chitosan where amino, amino acid at carbon number two. And also they also inhibit mRNA and the protein nutrients translation, protein translation. And they also kill the iron required for microbial growth. That's also the major role for COS. Okay. And now I'm gonna move to marine oil. So actually the fish oil and shrimp oil also important and gain interest. And I believe that most of the, you guys, some of you, some of you, maybe not most because you're still young, they take the uh, fish oil daily. That's because they're rich in the, you know, omega-3 fatty acid name like uh, DHA, docosa, hexa, you know, acid, and I, you know, guys are penta, you know, acid, acid, 22, three, uh, and uh, six double bond, 20 uh, carbon, five double bond, and both of them is omega-3 fatty acid. Apart from that, shrimp oil also have the atacentin. That's also important, I'm gonna talk later. Okay, and this is very important because omega-3, our body cannot synthesize, so we consider it as essential fatty acid, okay? And that way we can, uh, can use a supplement and you can see a lot of the fish oil and, uh, in the market. But when compared with the krill oil, krill oil also important, but more, much more expensive. So that's why we try to study shrimp oil to mimic the krill oil because it's also crustacean. To produce the crude marine oil, we can have several kind of methods, wet rendering method. Like for example, an in tuna industry, they use the head and then they just press it after cooking and then they release the oil and then refine oil later. And we can use hydrolyzed process, so, uh, solvent extraction process and other processes. And for today, I'm gonna talk about trim oil. So trim oil, we extract from the separate trait or head. And also we also can uh, extract from hepatopancreas you know, actually, um, why this, uh, I, where I can get this one? Actually, they have uh, the, you know, uh, the, the, some products like sashimi, but the customer, they want whole shrimp without hepatopancreas. So the industry have to suck out and this is become discard or leftover. However, this is very, very useful and have the health benefit. You can see from the, this one that we use, but, but this one we use to try to use hexane uh, uh, and isopropanol one to one. This solvent allowed to use in a food, okay? And you can see this one without dilution. This is dark red color. And I try to dilute to make you see that the color. So this, the, the why is red or uh, orange because it's rich in ethacentine, okay? And you can see from here, Apart from etacentin, they also rich in the uh, PUFA, EPA, DHA. And when you compare cephalothorax and hepatitis increase, they have different, somehow different in the ratio of the uh, EPA and DHA, but still high when compared with the uh, vegetable, oil, vegetable oil or another oil, okay? And uh, from shrimp oil, we also use a TLC, just the beginning, to see that we, we found that etacentin here, this is, uh, uh, carotenoid lipid extract. This is state, like a standard. And we found etacentin in our uh, uh, shrimp oil, okay? And this is a literature from the Spanish group. Etacentin actually, they have uh, three form, free form, monoester, diester. You see, you know ester, right? Ester bond is between the direction between OH group and also carbo carboxyl group. Carboxyl group from where? from amino, uh, fatty acid. You see fatty acid have metal N and carboxyl N. So carboxyl N gonna 
uh, make ester bond with the hydroxyl group here of atacentin. And you can see from here that they have the free atacentin, mo uh, free atacentin, monoester. You see that monoester with the, this one, the EP, EPA DHA. And also diester, it means that this side also esterified with fatty acid. The other side also esterified with fatty acid. And that's why they have monoester and diester here. And uh, since the, they have the PUFA, so that is it's kind of like not stable. So that's why they have the several kind method, like a soft capsule is common for the crude oil. Okay, like this. But however, we also you know, study the uh, to enhance the um, stability using different kind of technique. And one thing is micro encapsulation. So basically, we have to develop the raw, uh, raw material. You can see this micro encapsulation. We have, the, we have the shrimp oil at the core, and we have the raw material to have it developed. And basically, it's simple. We just start by uh, making the emulsion here, uh, along with the selected raw material, and then spray dry it. And you have to optim optimize also condition, inlet temperature, you know, flow rate, anything like this, and come up with a micro-encapsulated shrimp oil like this, it's powder form. So to free flow, and they are easy for application. Okay, and this is a sample that we published also this one. We try to uh, uh, study the different raw, raw material and we end up, we use the encapsulation efficiency as a major criteria. And we found that when we use sodium calcinate with gelatin and glucose syrup at one to one to four ratio, they render the highest 93%. So they still have some uh, fat on the surface, but Kind of less amount, all right? So this will be select this one as the, 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 the best raw material. You see that some of them is have low EE, okay? It's not reliable. And this one, when we take a look at for the microstructure, you can see that it's kind of like a, um, the bead. And when we crack it down, you can see this war and the raw material. And this one is star one, is the one that selected one. Remember that the highest uh, encapsulation is still have the bead and include the, um, or inside. And we also like a study to fortify uh, in micro encapsulation, you know, uh, a lot with the uh, shrimp oil. We can, we found that we can uh, add up to 3% without the change in sensory property and the chain color of the class and husk. And this is our data on the uh, overall line We confirmed that uh, we can add up to 3%. But if we add five percent, the people can um, detect like a shrimp flavor or like odor like this. Okay, and we can keep only for three days for the bread because we did not uh, add any antimicrobial uh, agents. And also apart from that, recently we also are uh, working on the non uh, liposome. Liposome is a system in the vesicle. You know, basically we use the phospholipid, and uh, um, they would have the bilayer and they contain the uh, shrimp oil inside like this. And this example that is look like a turbid um, uh, uh, suspension, but uh, in fact, they load the fat inside, okay? And they have smaller size. So we call nano liposome because they have the size less than 200 nanometers. And one technique that we also use, we call uh, kytosan TPP nano, the uh, gel. So you can see this uh, kytosan, remember that uh, carbon number two, they have the positive charge when, uh, uh, when we dissolve in acetic acid. And this is a type polyphosphate with a negative charge. And then once it's mixed together, they become the gel, okay, like this. And they can trap, they can trap the shrimp oil. This is a sample that we uh, prepare nano kytosan type polyphosphate loaded with the uh, shrimp oil. And this uh, we now in, uh, in, part, uh, in the review process. And you can see that shrimp oil is not like uh, you know, separate, okay? But they, this, they disperse throughout the, the aqueous phase. And we can we use this one for to fortify the drink, okay? And without any like a uh, fishy order. Okay, so now the last, last one, that I'm gonna to talk today is our protease inhibitors. All right, so when we talk about protease inhibitors, they also mainly uh, used in the surimi. The surimi is the concentrated protein produced from the fish mince. So we have to watch it to remove sarcoprimate protein, lipid, 
proteases, also blood, and, in, uh, and that's why we can concentrate more protein. And also we can improve the colors. This means the whiter in colors. And they can use a raw material to produce a lot of product like a imitation crab, chikuwa, uh, you know, like this. And this is uh, like a scheme to uh, make you understand more about the gel. So actually we start from a protein here. And if we, uh, like for example, on fresh fish, the undergo proteolysis, become a chat chain. And chat chain cannot make uh, like a good gel, we call monori. And also remember that for the um, uh, unicorn retrojected skin, the same thing in the meat also, they also have the heat activated proteases. And if we uh, in, uh, heat it up, this guy of the, the uh, proteases gonna cleave the peptide bond and become a chat chain peptide like this, and they cannot make the good gel. We call modori gel, it's Japanese gel, uh, Japanese term. However, for the good gel, uh, good protein, uh, they, uh, we add the salt, you know, unfolding, and then they undergo gelation during the uh, thermal processing. And mostly uh, for the practical point of view, they are do setting because they're gonna favor or enhance or induce the activity of uh, indigenous TGS or trans and uh, this is going to make it stronger gel. We call carbaboco gel, okay? And in the reality, uh, monori cause the weakened gel. So in the industry, they also have some food grade protease inhibitors added up inside, okay? And this is an example you know, in the US or in the Canada. They also have two species, passive whiting or two fathers. You see, they look ugly somehow. But passive whiting, actually, when, when start, I studied there, they had a big project. I think back to 1994, when I, I started uh, studying my PhD there, they had a big project using passive whiting because previously they cannot use at all, even cooking, because when they cook it and they become liquefied, they cannot have the meat uh, retained, liquefy. So after that, they also have the research and try to develop the, the protein inhibitors and they add it up. And they found that the major uh, contributor or, or the major process causing the degradation is cutting air that active at 55 to 60 degrees Celsius. And to solve the problem, uh, so they use the several kind of the uh, protein additive like egg white protein hybrid a white protein have allergy. So some, you know, some company in Japan, they don't allow to add the egg white in the surimi. That because the you know, Japanese consumer also have the susceptibility to allergy to egg white. Also they use the whey protein concentrate, soy protein isolate, B plasma protein, but now it's banned after medical disease. And also it's not halal, right? It's haram, it's haram. So that's why they don't, they, they normally didn't use it. Now, get back to the waste or byproduct from the fishery product. We have the roe from the female uh, tuna or other fish. So we use the roe or egg. First, the defecting use acetone, extract using 0.5 molar sodium chloride, and then heat it up to remove impurity, I mean, other uh, junk proteins. However, the protein meter is stable, okay? And they come up with silver then and freeze dry. And we found that it is quite specific to serine proteases. And this is a purification of the, uh, the protease inhibitors. Uh, this one, you can see from the uh, number uh, B first. When we use, uh, run SDS page, we can file the single band. So it means the pure protease inhibitors. However, under resisting condition, we file two bands. So wh what happened? So it means that these protease inhibitors consist of two dimer. It means two subunits stabilized by disulfide bond. You can see. Uh, 40 uh, kilodalton uh, and 30 kilodalton, totally 70 kilodalton, okay? And we, when we uh, do native page, we found only one band. So it means that this consists of two, diamond, uh, two uh, subunits. However, when we do standing, actually standing, you can see that under non resisting condition, this still function. I mean, we can see the band of produce inhibitors. However, they lose activities when we add the BME or sing agent there, and, I mean, under residual condition. So it means that they have to be dimer as an native form and it can function, okay? If you spread it out, it's loose activities. 
and to to verify that this is a, a, a can be used as, as a protein inhibitor. So we study on two conditions: mercury gel and carbo gel. So mercury gel we uh, subject to 60 degrees Celsius, which is optimum condition for uh, indigenous proteases, and followed by heating at 90 to complete gelation. And another one, carbamoco gel, we setting at 40 degrees Celsius. As I mentioned, that we allow the transferase to uh, function and crosslink to transfer acyl group from glutamine to lysine, yeah? and then fo followed by heating, cooking, and then this is a favorite trans transferase, and then we come out with carbamoco gel. And this is uh, like uh, how the gel set or uh, so basically the protein molecule that can uh, form junction zone here, see? And like glue, you know? So those types of bonding is to play a major role to glue the uh, protein uh, polymer together, okay? And become the um, gel. And this is an example. Uh, when we add the uh, inhibitors, you can see that for the um, breaking force and information, Modulary gel, the black bar, and combo gel is a white bar. You can see the breaking force increase with increasing level of the proximeter for both uh, breaking force information. And we take a look from the, the gel. You can see that when we add more proteasimeters, the more mass inhibition what retain. It means that they prevent the degradation of the uh, mass inhibition, which is susceptible to, susceptible to proteolysis. And also the similar thing with uh, uh, far with carbobocal. Okay, so that's why they still retain myrosimation and myrosimation can undergo gelation and provide the gel strength as indicating by increase in gel strength. Okay, the last, almost the last slide, we also use the squid ovary, which is a byproduct we, uh, during the uh, you know, skinning or removing the eviscerating. So we extract the um, uh, emitters using 0.45 molar sodium chloride and also heating at 70 degrees, degrees Celsius to remove impurity and freeze dry. This is a powder for C, C, um, COSP, is mean the squid ovary protease meters. And also we are testing the same thing we add in the surimi gel, and we found that we can um, add up to 2%. And this we compare with egg white. You can see egg white, when we add, it can increase up, up to 3% or 2%, higher for the uh, emitter from the squid egg, we can add only 2%, okay? And the formation ha also have the similar term. However, they also have the um, mark increase in breaking force when compared with control one, because we use macro in the macro, have the poor gelling uh, quality when compared with other uh, fish. So we recommend 2%. And also this is a, a, a protein pattern. We found that with the increasing level, they have them, uh, this one you can see clearly. All right, so actually they have, uh, uh, I don't have much time, so actually we, we can produce a lot of the uh, valued product like fish enzyme, seafood sparing, glucosamine, and other products from the uh, uh, byproducts, okay. So I'm gonna end up with summary that byproduct from fish and shellfish processing should be fully utilized to increase the revenue for the processor. New value added product, particularly for a nutraceutical with biodiversity and higher price must be further developed. Natural and safe ingredient or additive from fish and shellfish processing byproduct can be produced and used instead of synthetic counterpart. And fishery resources can be sustainable and maximally exploited. So thank you so much for attention. Any, any questions? Oh, can, can I take uh, like a, a few minutes? Actually, you know, I, I'm from this uh, institute, right? I'm in a center. And we're gonna have the PhD scholarship available for students. Uh, so we're gonna have 10 scholarship for PhD st study in food science technology with emphasis of fish processing, post-hour technology, Value addition of fish waste, active packaging, nanotechnology, assembly. Okay, and qualification is mean that uh, applicant must get uh, must receive master degree, must have English proficiency test like IELTS, TOEFL, and 
publication if possible, if you have, this is good, you know, to uh, selection. And after that, you have to go to online application, which is all year, uh, all year round, you can apply anytime. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Tawad. I think it's very uh, comprehensive uh, presentation, uh, Professor Tawad. It's a cover all aspect of the uh, marine uh, byproduct, and then we can learn a lot of things uh, how we can uh, increase the value of the byproduct uh, from the gelatin uh, to produce the hydrolyzed collagen, how to use a bond from the fish yeah, to produce a bio calcium, uh, to produce a keto oligosaccharide that you can use for different uh, purpose. Uh, so now the new one is a strip oil, so we can produce a so, uh, stream oil from the waste of the oil. And the last thing about the uh, protease, we can extract, we can uh, put uh, extract uh, protease inhibitor uh, from uh, different sources, such as from the raw of tuna, from the squid of curry, and many uh, potential uh, raw material to produce a fluid product. I think uh, you already successfully enlightened us and lead us with a uh, uh, wide range of knowledge, uh, Professor Tawad. And then this one is, uh, and also uh, thank you for the information for the business collection in your uh, center for start. I think uh, I think we have some uh, students that were willing to ask uh, you for start regarding your presentation. Uh, this one is belong to Livy, yeah, so Livy and uh, Livy and uh, Iliana, I think. Okay, Livy. Livy, are you there? So, uh, any question from the participant, from the student? Okay, or oh, Iliana? Ivana, oh sorry, uh, Ivana. Or oh, maybe from the other student, any question? There are two things actually, you know. No question is meaning crystal clear. The other one, <laughs> they don't, they cannot follow at all. <laughs> they have to, no, no, no. To, it's to, very, it's, it's, because I think uh, maybe uh, this one they write, write something here. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, let me read first the question from uh, Dian. Uh, okay, uh, uh, okay. Let me let me read from the question from Ibu Dian, one of the, our lecturer. Okay, I have concluded uh, from your position that only keto oligosaccharide are able to inhibit a bacterial growth. How about ketosan? Is also uh, bacteriostatic? Is a first question from the Ibu uh, Dian Rahmawati. Eh? Uh, I think can you directly answer for start before we go to the next question? You mean the, the, how, you mean how the keto oligosaccharide or COS inhibit the bacteria? Yeah, that's all for the ketosan because you, according to your presentation, it's only keto oligosaccharide. Okay. How about the ketosan? Yeah, ketosan. Ketosan has been known, you know, as a like, a, you know, um, antimicrobial activities. That because actually the uh, carbon number two, they consist of amino group, you know. So those kind of things are very important because they can, uh, they believe that they can like a uh, complex with the uh, metal ions, you know, because. Uh, Actually, micro, uh, microorganisms, they also like uh, require some, uh, um, you know, uh, mm, what do you call, uh, require some metal for, for their growth. And the, the second one, the chitosan also like kind of make a complex with the, um, like, uh, the cell wall. That's why they can like, uh, you know, change or the, induce the leakage of the cell wall as well. The similar thing, but since the chitosan, or COS have the smaller size, so that why they can like interact more effectively when compared with chitosan with a large or huge molecule. Okay, thank you, Stawa. And then the second question: What is the most economical method for producing the keto oligosaccharides? I'm sorry. As a, the the most economical method for the production of the keto oligosaccharides. Okay. I would say that you know radical uh, generating uh, method is a kind of, uh, uh, I have to like um, economically produce that because if you go for the enzyme uh, like uh, especially for chitosanase, it's very expensive. 
So that's why we also conduct some experiment using the non-specific enzyme like a light paste, amylase, but the, the degree of cleavage is also uh, uh, not, not much. So we also want the chitoalic glide with the low molecular weight that we want, we call DP, degree of polymerization. So I think the, the best way we can use the ascorbic together hydrogen peroxide, you know, and don't worry about the um, remaining hydrogen peroxide. That's because hydrogen peroxide is not stable and then they can uh, decompose later. Okay, so I would say that the radicals um, method is kind of practical. So you suggest the basing the radical method of for the production yeah, of yeah. ketoolic right? Yeah, in terms of the- And then, uh, and then uh, uh, the last question from the Dian Rahmawati, in what strength is the bioavailability of the hydrolyzed collagen? Oh, about what? About what hydrolyzed collagen? Uh, bioavailability of the hydrolyzed collagen. Oh, okay. Oh, this, this one, of course, you know, is better, much better than the native collagen. As I mentioned, I, I, I compare, right? One company, they put the native collagen, triple helix, in the drink. But when compared with the rice collagen, it means that they have short peptide. So bioavailability is much higher because, you know, it's kind of absorbed easily, you know. And also, we also, actually, we also uh, study the, um, the changes during the gastrointestinal tract. And we also found that they, they further uh, hydrolyze to the smaller one. And that might also help to just absorb into body easily when compared with the native collagens. Okay, so I would say that the uh, hydrolyzed collagen or peptide have higher bioavailability when compared with collagens. Okay, thank you, Postal. I think I know your secret and look, uh, look young, younger eh? because I think you drink the uh, hydrolyzed no. collagen. <laughs> no, no, I did not. I didn't use the collagen. I, I, yeah, I have to because, start because of my. Based I on your research. Retired. I must retire. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? Okay, this one is next from. Yeah. Uh, from Evie. Ivy or Ivana? Where is Ivy or Ivana? You want to ask something to Professor Tawat? Please. Okay. Okay, Ivy. I can't hear her. We cannot hear you, Ivy. Did you turn on the microphone? No, still not. Ah, uh, check, check. Am I audible? Okay, now, now it's okay. Okay. Okay, now my voice is audible. Check. Okay, yes. Uh, thank you, Professor Sotawat, for the presentation. It was really enlightening my knowledge about the use of marine byproducts. Now, there are two questions that I want to deliver. Uh, number one, as the trend of veganism is rising, is it possible to produce collagen completely by plant-based or microalgae? And my question number two, as an unexpert in collagen, I found out that inside commercialism, there are some pro-collagen-based marine products, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the precursor or the forerunner for the collagen itself. Now, my question is, uh, is collagen also found naturally or synthetically? If yes, is there any possible method to distinguish organism that produce pro-collagen and collagen? Thank you. That's all from me. Okay, the, the, the answer for the first question that, you know, actually for the collagen, basically, you know, we found in the animal only. The plant is this kind of very negligible. So why, you know, actually um, the uh, we, we, we know for a long time that the starting material for collagen is kind of like skin or bone. Firstly, they focus on bone wire porcine. However, for the region constraint, they move to fish uh, collagen or gelatin. That's because uh, regardless of the regions, anyone can consume that. And also they also like are free from the, some diseases, like a medical diseases. 
like that. So that's why they make the fish collagen and gelatin is very popular right now. Okay. And that, that, that's the question. So for algae, I think it's also like a plant related. So I think it's kind of negligible amount of the collagen. So better to use like, a, you know, uh, animal related uh, material, skin, bone, scale, anything, for example, like this. Is this clear for the first question? Is this clear for the first question? Okay. For the second question, you, men you mentioned about the, uh, the, the collagen synthesis, how to synthesize collagen, something like this. You say, you, you asked me that, uh, how to synthesize uh, peptide or something like this, right? Uh, no, my question is about how to distinguish the procollagen that derived from animal or from any other possible organism from collagen itself. So there's distinguish between between the pro-collagen and collagen. Yeah. When you what do you mean by pro-collagen? Yeah, so I found out that there are some commercialism in, for example, cosmetics or beauty products that use pro-collagen that is proclaimed derived from the marine products. So actually I want to know more about what is the procollagen itself? Is it is actually derived naturally or synthetically, or if it is possible to be derived from the natural resources, can we distinguish the procollagen and the collagen? That that's a good question, actually. You know, but but basically, you know, you we, we can uh you, you can maybe you use a lot of cosmetic, huh? Based on the collagen, probably. Yeah, it's a good question, <laughs> right? So it's a good question. <laughs> Uh, basically, I think if you want to know the sources, you have to use particular technique like Western blot, you know, immunoblotting. Immunoblotting, you remember? You remember, uh, remember that uh, when I show you one slide on the mice and rat on the uh, Thai 1 and Thai 4 collagen, that you have to use a particular technique to see the sources, okay? But basically, you, it's quite difficult to differentiate between the synthesized one and also the natural yeah. one. Because basically for peptide, for example, if I synthesize or produce a collagen peptide, okay, I know sequences, and then I hide company to synthesize the peptide. So they can do the same thing. So you cannot different, I mean, see the difference between, between that. But if you have, there's some different sources. And when you want to see, first thing, you can see the sequences also, you can see somehow. But the most important thing you can use the, like a, some, some uh, immunoblot thing, I think it's an effective mean to just differentiate the sources of the collagen. Okay. Yes, that's answer both of my questions. Thank you very much, Professor Sotawat. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Okay. Thank you, Le Levy, Fabria, and also Professor Tad for the clear uh, answer to the question of from Levy. So I think uh, Ivana, Ivana, are you ready? I think the last uh, question from the student, Ivana. Ivana, yes, there? thank you for, yes, I'm here. Am I audible? Okay, okay, okay. Am okay. I audible? Okay. First of all, thank you for the opportunity. I'm Ivana from Food Science and Technology, March 2019. I would like to ask you a question. Could you explain a bit why during collagen extraction, the pepsin solubilized collagen yield is always higher than acid solubilized collagen? Thanks, it and fetch. Okay, so actually, you know, uh, as a, in the slide, why we have to use pepsin, you know, and actually the pepsin in the market, normally the from porcine. And I think it's not so good for um, the Muslim, you know, or the, the, the one that strict with the, the consumer porcine. So basically, uh, let's say that how it work. So pepsin, if we can, you want to share screen again? Sorry? No, 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 I, I want to just uh, share here. Okay, you, you asked about this, right? 
Yeah. Okay. So based. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Proteases. If you do other proteases, what happens? They're gonna clip. They're gonna clip here, clip here, clip here. So you cannot keep the native collagen. Why the pepsin they selected? Because they cleave only this region, this region only, this region only. I mean, telopathic region only. They never cleave inside the chain. So they still keep tropo collagen here. But when we take a look from the, you know, like a SES page, I'm not sure they, we have or not. You, we can see that they have slightly lower molecular weight because this part was removed from tropocollagen, but the property in general is similar to acid soluble collagen. All right, understand? You cannot use other enzyme. You have to use only pepsin. That because spec 60 only for this region. Okay. So that's why we call pepsin soluble collagen. Okay, thank you, Postawa. It's clear, Ivana. Okay, because the enzyme there is their own function, Ivana. There's specific uh, region only. Okay, uh, uh, maybe a last question. If any from the participant, let's open for the lecture for the last question to Professor Tawa. Let we use the opportunity to learn from the Professor Tawa. Maybe for the faculty member. Okay, I have a question, uh, Dr. Nurul Huda. Yes, please. Can you? Okay, good. So uh, thank you, Professor uh, Sotawat, for your uh, very insightful presentations. Uh, I'm interested in some aspect, uh, particularly in the extraction of, let's say, collagen or some other things that really valuable. Uh, have you tried to do extraction using, let's say, microwave or uh, ultrasonic that, yeah, well, we know that as uh, uh, it's common knowledge that ultrasonic or microwave somehow can uh, help to extract uh, with higher efficiently efficient extraction. So have you tried about uh, that technique? And then the second one is related to the, I'm not sure what is the hydrogenated collagen, if I'm not mistaken, it also has antioxidant activity. So in my previous research, uh, some, if we have to uh, antioxidant compound, let's say a collagen or a phenol, and then uh, we combine it, it might result in a synergistic or antagonistic effect of uh, antioxidant activity. So do you have any insight regarding this? And have you uh, done the research about it? If not, maybe in the future we can try to do research together related to this area. Thank you. Okay. okay, we did all that you made, but we don't have time to talk today, okay? So actually for the first question about the collagen or gelatin, we also apply ultrasonication because the ultrasonication kind of cause a, a cavitation effect, you know, like uh, the generate bubbles, you know, and when they collapse, they get to produce a huge energy and they can break down all the things. So the yield of the collagen and gelatin is increased. But however, we have to consider about the condition as well. If too, too, too strong condition, in you know, a harsh condition, they also break down the triple helix. But for gelatin, we don't care much on that one, okay? So we also check about the, the thermal property. We have to check about the um, protein pattern after we extract using our ultrasonification. We also have published, published a few papers on this one as well. Okay, so we have you have to optimize that. You know? All right. The second question. That's a good question. For any antioxidant activities, that's very important in terms of bioactivities and also additives. You know, because uh, for additive point of view, you know, like uh, some lipid oxidation, they can cause the rancidity, and you need that one to prevent that. Okay. And the good question from you, uh, of course, if you conjugate the polyphenols into the peptide, they drastically increase the antioxidant anti activities. We did, we get, you know, uh, uh, peptide with the uh, uh, serochide of the 
polyphenol like EGCG, epicalocadigan gallate, and also other uh, phenol compound. And we found that they have the drastically increase in antioxidant activities. However, in terms of bioactivities, we found that if we graph it or conjugate it, somehow they also reduce the like a proliferation of the uh, we, we we found that for the uh, fibroblast proliferation activities, if we graph with the uh, phenol compound, the activity is slightly lower. So it depends, you know, it depends on the um, bioactivity that you uh, interest. Okay, but basically they definitely increase antioxidant activity. That because they have the heresy group that readily uh, providing proton or electron to the target, I mean radicals. Okay, thank you for that, for the clear answer, uh, from the, for the question from Dr. Dimas. I think we have a new coming uh, question from a student, uh, Professor Tawad, from Pausan Sigma. Okay, Pausan Sigma. Okay, please, please pause on. Okay. okay. Good afternoon, Professor Sutawat. Sawadi Krab. Sawadi my Krab. Sawadi Krab. Sawadi Krab. Kapun Krab. Thank you. And uh, thank you for your very interesting uh, presentations and research and uh, very inspiring profile of you. Uh, I have a question about the hydrolyzed collagen that is made from the byproduct of the fish uh, skin that in some of your papers that you said that uh, the hydrolyzed collagen from the fish skin has uh, bioactive compounds, antimicrobial, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and everything. But as I understand that the fish uh, skin contains a lot of uh, lipids, right? So uh, the lipids, I think it can be easily oxidated. So the oxidation may occur uh, during the process of the produ production of the hydrolyzed collagen. So how do you encounter this uh, problem? Do you have any pre-treatment or something? Would you mind to explain to us? Thank you. Yeah, that, that's a good question. Also, this is one challenging for us because uh, actually um, we, we have the problem with this kind of thing that you mentioned because after we produce you know, any product, either gelatin, hydrolyzed collagen from fish skin, normally we end up with a fish order. So we develop the technology we use power electric field, but I did not, uh, 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 I'm not sure I can share the screen. Well, well. And no, no share screen here. But in, the, in, the, in the meantime, no, 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 no. Well, in the meantime, you know, I, I, I want to explain that. I'm just share screen. Let me just share screen. So basically, you know, we, we have to remove the repeat as much as possible. And uh, wait, 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 wait a minute, just, just, uh, just, just, uh, just, uh, folder in, folder in, folder in, folder in, folder All right. Oh, sorry for oh, make you waiting. So this one, you can see that, you know, you see bad skin that you mentioned that a lot of fat. So, okay. Uh, so you can see here, 
this is the skin for the sea bass. And we stand with the uh, nine blue A. And you can see from here, a lot of the fat distribute throughout the, the skin. That is challenging for us. But finally, you know, we end up with this one. What happened? So we use this high technique that, you know, we call, we, we use the vacuum impregnation together with the uh, prior, the uh, polyelective field and also use a light paste. Okay, so I got to explain a bit more that one, this is Skyla vessel. So what happens is we subject the uh, skin with the PF first. The PF, they kind of induce electroporation. So make the like a very small hole or you know, small hole. And then we, we push it, I mean, we apply pressure and pressure gonna push the right paste inside the, the small skin like this. And then we release, release the, 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 the vacuum and we do for four cycles. And that time we found that light paste get in, get in through the skin easily and then hydrolyze the, 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 the lipid. And then we also, you know, that's why to check that one, we just use this one this uh, skin, initial skin, and compare with the one that we have, we found that you can see the red dot is made, represent the lipid is drastically decreased. And also we uh, study on the you just, uh, uh, GC spimi, and we found that this one have the much lower, the abundance of the um, oxidation product like aldehyde ketone. And also for the sensory evaluation, the fishy odor and fishy flavor, you can see that, but the one with the, our do, uh, development thought using prior um, uh, PEF followed by vacuum impregnation together with light paste, we found the lowest fishy odor when compared with the, the one that without doing anything like this. Is this clear? Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. So you can remove the fishy odor and volatiles using the- Of course, the of course. House electric because, field you know, and uh, you know vacuum impregnation, right? Yeah, no, you know what? Actually, right. uh, basically, the industry in, in the real uh, commercialized, they also pre they, they mostly produce the hydrolyzed collagen from the you know, scale ozone. Scale ozone is mean demerized scale. That because they want to avoid the fishy odor caused by fat because in the scale they don't have fat. Okay, oh. but we consider that. It's challenging for us to just utilize the skin and make the product with less fishy odor. So we have developed this one. Okay, thank you for your explanation. Thank you. Okay, thank you for start for the clear explanation of your technique to reduce the fat content in the skin before proceed with the gelatin production. I think uh, time is not with us anymore. I did uh, 15. Uh, I think, uh, thank you very much for support for enrich us uh, with your wide range knowledge on the uh, marine byproduct. I think uh, we hope uh, next time we will be able to invite you again because too many things that we need uh, from you. As I mentioned, maybe you not know, talk about the coplasma technology here. Eh? Um, you know, talk about the extraction by using the ultrasonic or any uh, of the method. Maybe next time, uh, if uh, any opportunity, we will be willing, we will happy uh, to invite you again in our uh, activity, uh, Prof. Stawat. I think uh, time is not exactly 12 or 15. Uh, maybe uh, we need to, I pass to, to the uh, master of ceremony. Yeah? Is our um, master of ceremony? Before we close in. Thank you, Professor Sutawat bin Jakul and Dr. Nurul Huda for the fruitful session and interesting discussion. Thank you for sharing once again. For the next session, there will be a certificate presentation to the speaker by Dr. Danar Prasetyanga as the head of the Department of Food Science and Technology. To Dr. Danar Prasetyanga, time is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, MC. Uh, okay, uh, thank you so much, Professor Sutawat, for giving a lecture and your uh, share your experience, share your knowledge 
for enrichment to all of us, uh, in particular for our students. And of course, we hope that this is not the end of the activity. We hope that the communication uh, between us will be continued, and we hope that we can initiate other uh, possible collaboration activities in the future, including academic or research exchange activities. Thank you so much, Professor Stawat. Uh, yeah. Very nice to see you here. Thank you so much. Also, I would like to thank the university for inviting me to like share my knowledge. And hopefully, we're going to look forward to have the co uh, close cooperation. Uh, yeah, like I know, as you mentioned, that still exchange, stop exchange. And also, like I know, anyone who are interested in to study a PhD, you, the scholarship is available and it start in new academic years. I mean, by May of the 2022, like this. Okay, so thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to my knowledge. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Stawa. Okay, thank you for starting for, for Dr. Yeah, thank you Dr. also to as a coordinator, the great coordinators. <laughs> you also like contact me all the time for the details, anything, and already remind me also. Actually, I have to give the lecture like this tomorrow in India also. Tomorrow. On fish enzyme. Okay, okay, congratulations for start. Yeah. Okay, it's Miss Master Ceremony. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Danar Praseptianga. And once again, also thank you very much, Professor Sutawat Bin Jagul and Dr. Nurul Huda for the great and insightful session. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have come to the end of our agenda. We hope you have found this afternoon's presentation informative and useful. I am Graciela Amaris as the Master of Ceremony and on behalf of the organizing team would like to apologize for uncomfortable situation and any possible mistakes done during this event. I would remind that tomorrow next letter by Professor Dr. Rajiv Bhatt from Estonian University of Life Science, Estonia with a topic of sustainable food production in the circular economy context. So don't forget to join with us again at 2 p.m. Thank you very much for spending time with us today. Good afternoon and see you tomorrow. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.